welcome to the Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. I'm Grace Knowlton. I am a co-chair for the GPTA Ladders Program, and I will be your host for today's episode. Today, we'll be talking about all things ladders um, and what the Ladders Program can bring to you as a GBTA member. I'm joined today by my two other co-chairs for this season, Lindsay and Allie, and they'll go ahead and introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay Straub. I'm the Vice President of Sales for the BTN Group, and I am based in New York. Super excited to be here today and to, as Grace said, share all things about ladders. And I am Allie Prejean Smith. I am the Director of Marketing at BCD Travel, and I am also thrilled to be joining. Perfect. Thanks, guys. So we're going to start with what Ladders is all about and why folks should get involved with the program next year or any year thereafter. Allie, can you share a little bit about what Ladders is, why folks should get involved, and start off with what our three pillars are of the program? Absolutely. GBTA Ladders is a team-based mentorship program, and as you mentioned, it's really built on three key pillars. The first of which is the project presentation. It's sort of the crux of the program, and it's where teams of six mentees, one alumni advisor, and one mentor really work together towards a project that's related to our season theme. And coupled with this, we um, also provide central professional development opportunities via monthly webinars in our summit, and we have networking opportunities for all involved, which are both in-person and virtual. Ali, can you talk a little bit more about your network? A few years ago, you moved over to the UK, and can you just tell our listeners a little bit more about how the Ladders Network helped you transition from living in Texas to living in London and, and how that helped your career as you moved across across the pond, if you will? Absolutely. Ladders gave me kind of an immediate in with the business travel community in the UK when I made my global move. I really didn't know that many people in the market um, and as all of uh, the individual business travel communities are around the world, it's a close-knit bunch. So it was fantastic to go to my first industry event um, and be able to connect with people that had been participating in the Ladders program. It's certainly one of the uh, many reasons that I think others should be getting involved in the program to expand your network. Um, There's also, as mentioned, a ton of kind of professional growth and development opportunities. All three of us, I think, can share journeys as to how we've grown uh, participating in the program over the years. And we've seen mentees um, transition into mentor roles. We've seen some of our former mentors, you know, take the stage at industry events. Most recently, uh, a mentee kind of presented at BT and Innovate. So the professional development and growth is another key benefit as to why to get involved in the program. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. One of the other key portions of the Ladders program is the season's theme. In the past, there have been many different themes that have um, been addressed through the Ladders program for an entire season. Can you talk a little bit about the themes that we've seen in the past and the topics that our teams have tackled in previous seasons? Absolutely. The the current season topic, um, which year over year is kept very intentionally vague. This year's season topic is all about looking outside of the industry to drive change. Year over year, we've seen kind of these these vague topics. Last year, the topic was corporate responsibility. What's next? And again, they're, they're kept intentionally vague So the teams can really come together to hone in on an angle um, that they're really passionate about, that they can dive into research and and come up with, you know, very unique presentations on this specific topic. This year, we actually have 18 teams in the program, which is phenomenal. Um, And you'd be surprised. We do not get repeat presentations, you know, um, on on these topics. We really get 18 unique angles and, um, and presentations as the teams work for months um, pulling together research. So we're excited about this one. Our our industry is certainly in a state of transformation right now. And we're excited to learn uh, from the transformation of other industries and bring that into travel. Perfect. Thanks, Allie. Now, 
clearly there's a great benefit to the individual participation in the Ladders program. Lindsay, can you jump in and just explain a little bit more about the benefits to an individual company and why companies should be supporting individuals if they are keen to join in the Ladders program? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a, a clear benefit for a company to support a program like Ladders so that they can showcase their commitment and their dedication to talent, talent development as well as employee retention. Um, now more than ever, companies have been struggling with resources and supporting something like Ladders where their employees can really work through personal and professional development is a testament to that company. It also gives the company the opportunity to showcase some of its employees throughout the Ladders program where there's endless connections that can be made that of course benefit our Ladders members personally, but also professionally. Um, we're all part of this travel ecosystem and we all tend to work together in some capacities. So to have these different companies be represented throughout the Ladders program is a, a huge benefit. Uh, there's no cost to join the Ladders program outside of needing a GBTA membership. But that being said, it's often required that the members have approval from their company. So we do try to promote these key takeaways for the company because there is an investment of time for the members. And so having your company's support to really propel you through the program goes a very long way. Absolutely. I know personally, whenever I'm asked internally, if I know somebody at a certain company uh, or if I can make a connection, a lot of the times I'm drawing on my ladders network and people are like, how do you know so many people in the industry? And the answer is always, well, it's the, I know them through the ladders network. So there's definitely a very clear connection there for your company connections and how that integrates into your work life and not just to your personal network. So let's move on to how the season is structured. Um, Allie, can you talk a little bit more about the timeline, how we transition from season to season and kind of the stages that we work through throughout the year? Yeah, absolutely. The latter season runs from GBTA convention to GBTA convention. Um, the, the program accumulates at convention, which is really exciting. It is certainly one of the benefits of being a winner, a winning team. You get to present in your very own breakout session on stage at convention, which is a highly sought after speaking slot. And following that convention, we get a lot of noise um, about the program. So that's when applications uh, really kick off and open. We kick off season around November timeframe. Participants hear from our keynote on the season topic and theme, and they get a chance to virtually connect with their peers and their team members in the lead up to the holiday season. After the holiday season is where things really kick off and start running. The teams start meeting on a weekly basis, typically, and they're connecting with each other. They're researching into the season theme. They're really kind of coming up with their project presentation. In March timeframe, the teams get a chance to present to a industry panel of select judges um, and people that can really weigh in on the topic, as well as how they're putting their presentation together and communicating that information. This allows the teams to kind of give, um, to get a, a month where they can adjust their presentation ahead of the finals uh, to really give them the best opportunity, you know, to put their best foot forward uh, during that final presentation slot, which takes place at the end of April. And then it all comes to a head at Summit. Summit typically takes place in May, where we bring together kind of all of those three pillars that we talked about in Ladders into one view. So in-person networking, uh, professional development opportunities, and of course, we get to hear from our final four teams based off of their virtual presentations and the, the whole group attending Summit gets to hear those live. The people attending Summit actually get to vote on the winner, and that winner is the, the group that then goes on to present live at convention. And I should mention, 
throughout this whole timeline, we're having monthly calls with our mentors and our advisory board and our alumni advisors. We have committees that are working together um, on various aspects of the program and keeping things moving. And we have monthly professional development webinars where um, we're talking to the teams about key topics uh, to help them move along in their career, as well as both in-person and virtual networking um, opportunities in some of our key markets and tied to larger industry events. Absolutely. So all three of us have been involved in the program for quite some time now. I'll, I'll save you the, the yearly count, but uh, Lindsay, can you talk a little bit more about how the program has evolved over the year that we've been involved in the program and how the feedback from members has kind of molded what the program has become today? Sure. The the program has evolved over the years that we will uh, keep to our, ourselves, but to Grace's point, it's been many, many <laughs> years that we've been in the program, and it has certainly evolved from the time that I was a first-year mentee to now sitting as a co-chair on the leadership team. It's so important to have a constant pulse on the program members to understand what it is that they are looking to learn throughout the season, whether that's industry knowledge, whether that's skills that they can hone in their personal and professional development as they look to advance their careers. So we do check in with members each season and we'll survey them to understand what some of those topics might look like. And we really do need to be agile as a um, leadership team as we look at the total number of program participants. We are right now in our largest season to date. It's our ninth season. And we've got 185 total members, 18 total teams. And for point of reference, last season, there were 12 total teams. So we do need to be mindful and cognizant of this total number so that we can deliver content and networking opportunities that benefit that larger group. Um, there is a huge mix to the type of program member in terms of geography, time in the industry, time in a new role, and a number of other factors that really keep the program extremely diverse. And we always try to do a wonderful job at accommodating all of those differences to, again, benefit the overall group. Absolutely. I think it's also notable to call out, you know, as the world changes, so does the Ladders program. So in 2020, when we could no longer host Summit in person, we decided to host it virtually. And then we could no longer meet in person, we held virtual networking sessions. So even throughout the time when we were all staying home and we couldn't get out and see each other and do things that we normally would, the Ladders program and leadership helped, the pro helped Ladders to pivot in a way that made it so that it was still a sustainable program and kept people involved, which I think is a, is a true testament to the value of the program where people still made time to be involved in Ladders, um, despite kind of what was going on in their work lives. Ladders is a great way to just stay connected to everybody outside of your traditional working environment. So I always thought that that was really great how we we pivoted as the world changed. We changed to as as a as a response. So let's talk a little bit more about the ladder structure, the different roles that are a part of the program. So, Ali, can you talk a little bit more about the difference between a mentee, a mentor, and the alumni advisors? And maybe folks listening can start to figure out where they would fit into that those roles and what they might think would be the best place for them to get involved in the ladders program. Sure thing. Um, I think the first misconception to address is that to be a mentee, you have to be new to the industry. Mm -hmm. We have mentees that are 30 years into their career, which is phenomenal because you pair somebody that's, um, you know, spent a ton of time in the industry and has a really broad depth of knowledge, but maybe it's really specific to your vertical within the industry, right? Maybe you've spent those 30 years focused, um, you know, on 
on the airline world. And actually, you want to get a broader knowledge on how um, the, the whole kind of travel industry works together. So um, the teams really bring together people across those verticals. And um, it makes for a very interesting conversation when you have people that do have so much experience joining the program as a mentee uh, to talk about, you know, what's going on in the industry with, with other verticals within it. The teams are made of about six mentees. Um, so you'll have mentees across verticals all working together on, you know, uh, on the project. And they're paired with one mentor or perhaps a team of co-mentors um, who, again, are industry veterans, um, they're leaders in their respective fields. And to help those mentors kind of manage, um, you know, it's, it's a time intensive program. Uh, it's certainly beneficial, but it does take time to, to go through this project and, and to really kind of make the most out of it. So we have some seasoned alumni advisors who have actually gone through the program before um, for a minimum of two seasons. And they're able to, one, help the mentees. They can address some of the concerns they have, um, say, when should their project kind of come together? What direction should they be taking? How to kind of hone in on that? How to assign roles within kind of their group? Uh, who's working on what in the project? The alumni advisors really help the mentees to kind of form that path forward. And they're also working really closely with the mentors to help lighten the workload, um, to help advise the mentors again on those same kind of steps. Um, and it's a really interesting piece, I think, as well within the program where if you stick with ladders and if you transition into that alumni advisor role, you do get a little bit more one on one time with your mentor. So this is a team based mentorship program. It's really about learning more about the industry and kind of, you know, building those connections. And that one on one mentorship um, really kind of comes into play, I think, when you transition into that alumni advisor role. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Lindsay, can you talk a little bit more about the advisory board and the committees? So outside of the team structure, the other participants in the ladder program, apart from our leadership team and the teams um, that participate in the presentation process, can you talk a little bit more about committees and our advisory board? Sure, absolutely. Uh, the, the committees are critical to the ladder's program. We on the leadership team uh, rely on them very heavily to help us make the program as beneficial as it can be. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, there's mentees who went through the program for at least two seasons who would then potentially transition into, as Ali was uh, speaking about, that alumni advisor role. And then there's that question of, okay, what's next? Uh, it's not um, to a point where that individual could necessarily jump to be a mentor who's leading a team, but they do really want to stay involved. And I know that I personally uh, faced this after being a mentor for two years, transitioning to that alumni advisor role, and then thinking, okay, I really want to stay involved, but what's what's next? Mm -hmm. There are plenty of committees to to choose from. Uh, there's a team for each of those committees of about three or four individuals who are meeting fairly regularly, let's call it monthly, sometimes every other week, depending on the cadence that's required. But to give some insight into what those committees are, there's our media and comms committee. They are rock stars. They are managing our website, the different communications that are going out to the members, our LinkedIn page. They're really hot on Instagram right now and Twitter. Uh, we've got our, our recruitment committee who is vital during the time that we're looking to recruit new members to join the program. We also have a committee for alumni advisors so that those alumni advisors can come together again regularly and speak through their experience, talk about what's working, what might not work, and how they can best support the team. We also yeah. have an events committee. So those are the gurus in terms of our in-person and sometimes virtual networking events. We have a giving committee that focuses on 
any type of give back event or activity that the program uh, wants to support. We're all very, very passionate about that. Uh, we also have sustainability. We have a practice panel committee and new this year, we have an accelerator committee, which we are so excited about. Uh, that team of individuals are working with our ladders teams on the programs and projects that they develop to really see what that evolution and journey can look like beyond the season should those different programs and projects have some viability uh, to be brought out to uh, market. Um, and also new this year is our DE&I committee, uh, and they've worked really well and are aligning really well with GBTA's DE&I committee to make sure that we are touching on that um, throughout the season and really all of the different initiatives that we've uh, just talked about. So Absolutely. And then in addition to the committees, uh, there is that advisory board. Uh, they're also vital to, to the latter's organization. Um, it's, it's made up of about 13 industry leaders who have some involvement with the latter's program in past, and they provide leadership and guidance and feedback throughout the season. Uh, we're very fortunate to be able to bounce ideas off of them. We're meeting with them monthly and running things by them. As, as we talked about, there's a ton of evolution and advancement of the program, and it would be a detriment, I think, to the program if the leadership team, not just us, but those who have come before us and those who come after us, did things in a silo without having that sounding board because the, no pun intended, advisory board um, are, are huge proponents of the program and their feedback is, again, critical to what we do and things that we put in place to better the program. Mm -hmm. Just going back to the committees for a quick second, I think something that can't be understated as involvement with the committees is the ability to hone those transferable skills. So specifically, let's just take the media and comms committee, for example. If you're not familiar with how to manage a uh, LinkedIn page for or a Instagram page for a company, this would be a great opportunity to, for folks to get that experience. So many times we look to take on jobs or apply to jobs and they want certain um, experiences before we're able to get those experiences. So joining a committee and getting into a topic that you may not get exposure to in your day job is a great opportunity to get involved in something else and get those, um, fill those criteria that you're looking to fulfill so that you can move forward and draw on that experience back into your day job and apply that going forward. So that's something that I have always found really beneficial as uh, you know, when I was a part of committees in the past, um, I'm sure you two, you both can, can that resonates with you as well. Um, so that Absolutely. was always the highlight for me. Mm -hmm, totally. And then uh, I'll just talk a little bit more about keynote speakers in the GBTA Foundation. So each year we are, uh, we partner with a keynote speaker who is an industry expert in whatever the topic is for that season that we have selected. So this year is Barbara Rose from EY. Of course, this year's topic is kind of um, draws on driving change and looking outside of the industry. Um, so her and her role with EY, we thought she'd be a great fit. Um, and she's also been involved as a mentor in the program in the past. So she's very familiar with ladders. We're very happy to have her with us this year. Um, we also uh, invite speakers to join us at the GBTA Ladders Summit every year. So these speakers are senior level in individuals that you may not get exposure to in your day-to-day -day job. So bringing them into the conversation into Summit for not only to provide content and to share their knowledge, but also to network and get to know them a little bit better so it starts to make this small industry feel even smaller in the best way. And then the GBTA Foundation as well that we are now rolling up into is a great resource for us and a great partnership and a natural way to roll up into GBTA. So we're very excited to be part of the GBTA Foundation this year for the first year. Um, and there are other pillars of the GBTA Foundation that we align with very nicely. So DE&I, sustainability, those are um, 
just different pillars of the GBTA, GBTA Foundation that we align really well with. So we're very excited to be a part of the GBTA Foundation this year. So we're gonna to start to wrap this podcast up. So um, I'm gonna start with Allie, move to Lindsay, and then I'll share mine. But what is your favorite thing about the Ladders program? What's kept you involved year after year after year and kept you coming back? Allie, I'll start with you. Well, for me, hands down, it has to be the global participation within the program. This year, I think we have 16 countries um, with people participating in the program. That country list changes and is in flux, but it is consistently global. Um, we have participants from the US, LATAM, Europe, and APAC all in the program this year. And again, just that instant connection, me personally with my move was, was such a um, breath of fresh air and such a step forward for me in terms of my career. So hands down the global nature. Great, thanks. Lindsay? Oh, for me, it's it's the networking opportunities. I am, um, most people know I'm a big time social butterfly. So that, that comes naturally to me, but I've been able to meet so many uh, different people at all different companies throughout the entire corporate travel ecosystem. And to be able to have this kind of a connection with them beyond what we may have already had or not in our day job has been so impactful to who I am as a person, uh, my career and the benefits really are, are just endless. I totally agree. And for me, my favorite part of those GDT Ladders program is the um, opportunity to travel to a unique place every year. So the GBT Ladder Summit happens in a different city each year in a pretty exciting location. We've gone to some great places in the past. This year, we'll be going to New Orleans. Last year, we went to Nashville. We've been to Miami and San Francisco. My first one was in Fort Worth. So places where GBT convention typically isn't held, so it gives members an opportunity to just get out there and travel to some pretty unique places and some some fun locations. So if you're interested in the Ladders program or you think that you know somebody within your company who could really benefit from Ladders, feel free to forward them this podcast or send them over to our website, our LinkedIn, or our Instagram page where we post regularly uh, our updates. We will open up recruiting at the, at the conclusion of convention this year. So those applications will open up and you'll have until about the 1st of October, give or take, there'll be more um, content coming out in terms of specific guideline uh, timelines for that. So if you're interested in joining Ladder, that is the time to apply is immediately following GBTA convention. Um, other than that, feel free to reach out to us. You can email us at ladders at gbta.org. Again, that's ladders at gbta.org. And I'll hand it over to Lindsay to wrap us up for today. Thanks, Grace. I hope that this has been helpful for you to better understand the program and ways to get involved. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. It's, it's clear that we're very passionate about the program and know that any of you would be as well. So thanks so much for, for joining us. You've been listening to The Business of Travel, the official podcast of the Global Business Travel Association. For more information about GBTA and its work, visit gbta.org. And be sure to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, thanks for listening. Bye.